first, thanks so much for doing this interview with me, man. But more importantly, you know, getting a chance. I was here before, of course, you showed up here at the List Gallery. And checking out these pictures, I'm going, oh my goodness, these things are amazing. And what I even love too is you were actually looking at something you're trying to figure out. Is this a print or is this the uh, actual copy? You couldn't even tell, man. That says great work. Yeah, the, the, uh, the company that does the printing is, does an amazing job. And some of this stuff, we've got a lot of originals here as well. Uh, some of these originals uh, I haven't seen in a lot of years. You know, when I paint something, it usually leaves my studio. It goes to the publishers in Las Vegas. Uh, and sometimes it lives there until it gets sold, and, and sometimes I don't see it again for years. Uh, the Bob Marley over here, that for example, I probably haven't seen this in seven years, you know, and they brought the original up. So it's, it's kind of neat seeing it after all this time, but yeah, it, so it can fool me as well. You well, bet. i got to ask you, man, how did this whole love of putting art and rock together with these icons, how did that all begin for you? Probably when I was about 10 years old, my brother came home with Motley Crue's Shout at the Devil. Oh, wow. Ble blew my mind. Like just the album artwork, the, the whole scene of that early 80s, um, it, it just it started something for me. And having an older brother, he's, he's about four years older than I me, mean, he would always bring home music. So I was, always had that a little bit older taste in the house. So, uh, and it just kind of stuck with me through the years. And... This stuff probably came to fruition about 15 years ago. It was the only thing that really inspired me enough to spend hours and hours at a canvas. Um, the, the real trick was trying to do it differently than everybody else. I mean, there are other guys that do icon art. Um, there's tons of them. Some of them I'm big fans of. But the, the real trick was to do it in a way where someone walked in, they could say, well, that's a stick man. You know, some of my favorites are like walk in and it can be a Keith Richards or a, Michael, uh, a, a Mick Jagger. I could look at it and tell you who that artist was. So finding your own style to do that art was the actual tricky part of it all, actually. How did you go about then in picking your subjects? Um, how did you come up with the pictures themselves? Were they from photos or anything? And the color schemes, those are the things that really stand out the shades for me. Yeah, so usually they, you know, it sounds kind of cliche, but they kind of find me. You know, you, you, you run across a music video that just kind of, maybe you've seen it a hundred times, but it just this time it touches you in a different way. I read a ton of rock biographies, get a lot of stuff from there. YouTube, just always something just inspires you. You know, even a song that you've heard a thousand times, you're driving down the street, you hear it one more time. Something clicks. It's almost like a game of Tetris. These pieces start to fall and... You know, it just, it almost feels like it's painting itself in your head. And, and those are the, that, that's the fun part, eh? is the conception of it when these pieces start to fall into place. Um, the color scheme, uh, it, I try to, I try to be as gritty as possible. I really don't like bright colors, although sometimes you, you can't get away from it. With pieces like the Prince and the Elton John and stuff. Um, I generally try to shy away from it although it doesn't always work that way. But I try to stay a little bit on the grittier scale, and that's where I'm more comfortable. So when I do something like uh, the, um, uh, the Gord Downey wearing purple and stuff like that, uh, it, it pulls me a little bit away from my comfort zone, but uh, obviously it has to be done sometimes. But, okay, like, let's talk about the Elton John here. Where did you find this? And just putting this all together because as we're doing this interview I swear he's either looking at you or looking at me that's the kind of great detail that I love well th th this piece um so I, I've got a uh, the three series of art I've got the rock stars rebels and rogues and the rogue side of it was um still musically based stuff but it was intended to capture uh, a different side of it instead of just regular portraiture so this piece actually started out it was going to focus on just sunglasses sunglasses rock stars with sunglasses and their place in rock history so it was going to be an elton john it was going to be roy orbison um bono and elton john and the whole concept was these guys you know kind of made sunglasses part of their persona and and that might still come to fruition someday but as i was doing my research and i was conceptualizing elton's just started stealing the show i mean those guys wear pretty subtle glasses and elton's glasses were so uh you know, outrageous out there that I was like, this just doesn't fit with the piece. So the more I started to think about it, it just transitioned from 
a thing about sunglasses into just being about Elton. And then I kept the, just the sunglass portion, just a little bit different. And uh, when, the, when the movie came out and you start to get a little bit of his background, and I knew a little bit of his background anyways, the look on his face, um, kind of like something to hide. He's kind of got that wry sort of look in his eye. I, I think it fit really well with the title of the piece as well, so. No, you definitely did. Who are some of the other icons that we're going to get a chance to see and purchase when we come to the List Gallery? Uh, I got um, a new Jimi Hendrix that I'm pretty excited about. Um, there's a bunch of uh, Rogue pieces here as well. Uh, Steven Tyler, I've got um, some, a, a new jazz piece that I just did. I, I kind of uh, stretch a little bit beyond rock sometimes, and I, I got a new Dizzy Gillespie and Miles Davis jazz piece that I, I'm, I'm kind of jacked about. Uh, I did a Drake piece. Um, obviously, coming to Toronto, you got to do Drake piece. And, you know, right? I'm going to stop you right there, because how did that one come about? We're gonna, we, we get a chance to see it just before this interview starts. How did that come about? Well, that was probably a slow drip for years because my girlfriend's a huge Drake fan. And, I, and I, I, I'm, she's a little bit younger than me. Um, and I'm not a huge hip hop guy, but you know, Drake, Drake's been around the house and he's, he's pretty cool. But it actually came during the Raptors run, right? Um, admittedly, I'm a Lakers fan, but I kind of got on board with the, the Raptors run and, and that whole thing. And around that time, we were starting to put this show together with Liz Gallery. And Liz said, you know, if you know anything more regional, that you're thinking of doing, and I was just like, well, but like I said, those Tetris pieces, this Drake fell into our lap on that one, so uh, I was excited to do it. Well, we're so glad you did that too, but the other one I want to talk about too, and I may have stopped you from speaking about it, David Bowie, that picture absolutely looks amazing. Yeah, it's, it's one of my favorites. I, I generally don't have a lot of favorites. I Usually by the time they leave the studio, I'm not even a big fan of them anymore. David Bowie's one of the few ones that I actually still don't mind as much. Um, it, it, I've got this uh, kind of a guilty pleasure on um, on aliens and, and stuff like that. So that whole piece kind of goes uh, ties into that with uh, you know just David Bowie being an alien and, and and just going home. So if you look at the title of the piece and the concept of the piece with the one star in the background and he's kind of telling you you know uh, to be quiet. It kind of all just fits into, you know, David Bowie didn't pass away. David Bowie just went home. There you go. Exactly. I'm just curious, have any of these stars ever, uh, I know some of them aren't with us now, but have any of them contacted you and saying, hey, I love this picture. I'd love to get this. Um, not directly. Um, I think th there are a few that have, have seen it. And I, I believe uh, DJ Asper from Guns N' Roses, I, I think I've seen one in his office. Um, uh couple of the Guns N' Roses pieces, uh, I've they've seen you would get tagged in or they would mention them or they would talk about them. I, I know some of the Motley Crue guys have seen some of the pieces. Um, so some of them, but uh, a direct contact, not so much. Hey, hey, that's yeah. enough, man. When you know that they've got it, that's the cool thing. We can purchase these here at the uh, List Gallery. What do you hope fans get when they see any of these uh, amazing art pieces? What do you hope they get from them? Well, I, I hope that they they get the difference. Like I said, I mentioned a little bit earlier about you try to do something different. You try to have your own style. Um, uh, not to put down any other icon artists. I mean, they, they're, some of them are great. But I really try to not just do a picture of someone's face. Uh, I try to have some art in it. So the backgrounds are usually abstract, impressionism, expressionism, street art. So actually the backgrounds and kind of the concept behind it, it's not just Bob Marley's face that I'm trying to get across, it's the expressionism in the background. So I would say some of the, that part of it, you know, the artistic part of it, I'm just not trying to be a human photocopier or copy machine. So yeah, I try to get some art out of it. And when it comes to a show, what I generally like the most is it strikes up conversations. You know, I do these shows all I do quite a bit in the, in the U.S. And I love when I've got um, a great example, a Led Zeppelin piece, and a guy came up to me and told me about the time he saw the Zeppelin in mid-70s at the Garden. We talked for a half hour about Zeppelin in the Garden. I, I, that's what I love. I, people just, you know, they, uh, mu uh, music brings out such an emotion, such a, a deep personal connection to it. That people just love come and talk about it. It's like, hey, man, how many times have I seen Gord Downey in the hip? And then you just had this conversation about the hip. Who doesn't want to have a conversation about the hip? 
I love it. I love it. I know the List Gallery uh, website is where we go to find out what's going on here. But around the world, wherever you're traveling, where do we go to follow you? Um, uh, lots in Las Vegas, Los Angeles. These are some of the galleries. Edmonton, Calgary. Um, follow me on social media, of course. Um, Facebook, Stickman Fine Art. Uh, Instagram, Stickman Fine Art. You know, all the good stuff. Pretty easy to find. I, I think I come to close to the top of Google if you put Stickman and Art. Well, Stickman does. Fine Art. So, uh, yeah, we, we, we get some good people that look after that. So, uh, we, you, you should be able to find me. Fantastic. My friend, thank you so much for this interview and thank you for this great art. Uh, thank you. Appreciate it.